Hi, I'm Lisa Yi, and I'm reading from Maisie Chan's Last Chance. Opa, I'm so sad that the lucky stories are over. His voice is shaky. Over? Who said anything about it being over? Lucky coming to America and building the Golden Palace was just the beginning. Your great-great-grandfather knew how to love Last Chance in a way that few had. He didn't see it as a dusty little town in the middle of nowhere. Lucky saw promise in the future. The doctor has been to the house twice this week, and it's only Wednesday. When I tell my grandfather about my paper son's research, he's thrilled. I thought it'd be done by now, I apologize, but it's taking so long. Opa motions me closer. I have to listen hard to hear what he's saying. Of course it's taking a long time. You're looking back at several lifetimes. Gather the stories. Don't lose sight of what Lucky and the Paper Sons have in common. I nod. The Golden Palace and Last Chance. My grandfather struggles to speak. You, Maisie. You're the connection. They all have you in common. The next day, as I near the house, I see a crowd. An ambulance is in the driveway with the red lights blinking. Opa! Is Opa okay? I shout as I run toward them. Oma looks at me. She opens her mouth, but no sound comes out. Mom gathers me in her arms. Unless you count when I was born, I've never been to a hospital before. The lights are bright, and the, broom, the room smells like a bad imitation of the woods. Mom and Oma hold hands as sorrow wraps them closer together. Opa's hospital bed is way fancier here than the one at home. The food here is terrible. Opa's voice is less than a whisper. Each word is an effort. If it doesn't kill you, nothing will. I fake a laugh, but every part of me hurts. I put on my poker face and hope that no one can see past it. Opa, you have to get well. Otherwise, who will tell the stories about Lucky and the Golden Palace? Before he can respond, a nurse opens the door. Visiting hours are over. Mom helps Oma out of the room. I'm in the hallway when something tells me to turn around. Opa struggles to sit up. He looks so weak, but I see a familiar spark in his eyes. Maisie, I'm betting on you to tell our stories, I hear him say. Then the door closes. Friends and neighbors bring condolences that go unheard and casseroles that go untouched. My grandmother has not been to the Golden Palace since Opa passed away. My mother doesn't stop crying even though she's run out of tears. I haven't cried at all. The only time I take off my poker face is when I'm alone. But even then I don't cry. There must be something wrong with me.